If you are a real estate agent and you are tired of cold calling, door knocking, paying for ads that flat out don't work, or just tired of not knowing how to generate leads, then this is the channel for you. We are four rockstar agents who have come together to help fellow agents achieve financial freedom as well as location and time freedom. My name is Andy Hollis along with my partners Aileen Fountain, David Doran, and Tim Hollanden. Together we have over 50 plus years experience and knowledge in the real estate and sales and training industry and we are hoping to pass that knowledge on to you. So let's get started. There's a million ways that you can market a home once you have it for sale. Uh, and there's no 100% right way to do it. I think what you do is you want to do more than your competitor does. At least uh, show that when you are in a listing presentation with someone, because that's going to help you get the listing. So for me, we really focus in on the front end, which is preparing the home to look its absolute best prior to getting it on the market and then when on the market. So just before we start, I'm gonna share my screen here and this is always a dangerous proposition. So we'll see how this goes. This is going back to uh, last week's presentation. Remember we sent out this email. Uh, I let you listen to this YouTube video about uh, sending out these basically anniversary emails, or you should be sending these to your sphere, even if you didn't sell their house, about their home value at least once a year. Depends how big your database is. Mine's over 300, so they get it once a year. If it was 100, they'd maybe get once a quarter, they would get an update on their market value. But it's a simple two to three minute video. And here you can see the actual email that I typed out. You know, can you believe it's been five years? Here's a little YouTube video of what your home's doing, value, so on and so forth. And she responds back, wow, thanks, Aaron. This is top-notch customer service. Hope you're doing great. You know, so just prove that these work, that when you put these things into place, they work. She's already subscribed to the YouTube channel, which I asked her to do in the video, if you remember. Uh, another thing that works is getting homes sold based using the systems that we're talking about. So we've kind of used that Tugman property from start to finish here. Well, that one closed last week. Uh, as you can see, they uh, left an awesome review. Uh, again, I send this out to them, prompting them to do it, or they're not going to leave you a review. You know, uh, people are 10 times more likely to need, leave a negative review than a positive one. So you have to prompt them to give you something positive. But again, Aaron was extremely diligent through the entire process. He brought detailed comparison information to our first meeting, provided a clear outline to prepare the list and delivered an amazing online package. That was what I delivered to them prior to even meeting with them, remember? Um, so again, proof is in the pudding. This stuff works if you put it into place, right? And I know if you're starting from scratch, it may seem very overwhelming and that there's a lot to do, but you know, uh, it's an elephant, eat it one bite at a time or however that saying goes, you know? Um, so getting into actually uh, marketing a property, the very first thing that we do, and why I'm going going into marketing a property prior to doing the listing presentation is the bulk of my listing presentation talks about our marketing. So I didn't want to talk about all the things we do, and then you'd have questions. I don't know how did you do that? How do you do that? you know? So this solve those questions first, then we'll do the presentation. We can get through it in probably thirty minutes or so versus an hour plus, like when I'm with a client. So. The very first thing we're going to do is we're going to do home staging. If you do not have a professional home stager, you need to get one. Uh, whether that's contact local agents that use staging, or um, I found most of the people we utilize as, as far as professionals outside of real estate through a local BNI group that I'm in. I used to use one stager and she was really combative. Like she, she was a high D and she just tell it like it was. And, those, you know, S and C personalities that do real well with that. <laughs> so um, I was always looking to replace her, but I couldn't find somebody. I'm in a BNI group. We can bring a stager in and she's awesome. She's like four foot eight, the sweetest little thing on the planet. And she's really good at what she does. And basically that's our first step. I pay for the initial staging consult and up to $500 mini staging expenses. Now, if you've ever done any staging, you know that doesn't go very far. 
but I used to do, uh, you know, if it's over a certain price point, I'll cover all staging. Well, then I was treated like an open checkbook and I got like a $6,000 bill once and I was like, what the heck is going on? So um, we stopped that. So that's the very first step. Second step is hire a professional photographer. Do not take the pictures yourself unless you just honestly can't afford to hire somebody. Like if it's your very first transaction, I get it. You may not have any money. You dropped all this money towards the MLS and all the other things that go into getting into real estate. You may not have any money. I get that. We have a solution for you though. Um, so the very first thing is hire a professional photographer. I also found them in my BNI group. There's a local one in Dallas Fort Worth called Shoot to Sell. They will come in, they have they hire like 30 photographers and they come in and do the HDR photos. Um, they're okay for a starter. But eventually you want to move into somebody that does this full time and that's all they do and they control all the images. The reason I use my photographer is I have licensing for all the images forever. So I can use them in my marketing. A lot of companies like Shoot to Sell and other companies like that, they put a limited life, limited uh, use license on the photos. So once the property sells, you're no longer by their technical terms, allowed to use those images. So it is important uh, to redefine print on some of those. So here's the people that do my photography. This is 2401 Watercrest, the Tugman property that we just closed on. You can see we get high quality images. They deliver everything um, from MLS compatible links, marketing prop links to video. Um, and they are, you know, uh, really, really good. So. Like if I was to launch the tour, you can see the images here. You guys. So it's a little slower when we're using Zoom. So high quality, they use their own lighting. So they bring in lighting. It just looks awesome when we bring them into the house. This looks way better than you can ever produce with your cell phone. Now, some of this, to some of you guys have been in the business for a while, this is old hat and you probably already have a professional photographer. These guys also do all of our drone stuff. So they create drone videos for us. Looks good. It's playing choppy on the zoom, but it, it yeah. So it gets a little choppy when we do zoom, but yeah, no, for sure. It's good though. But you can kind of see the reason we utilize this is we drone all of our homes that have something unique by them. Like these, this was a block off the golf course, as you can see. So obviously we want to show something that's unique about this home, show them the golf course. Cool thing about this is we actually showed this to a person that was um, getting their home ready to go on the market with another agent. They had made an offer with that agent and we didn't take it because it was contingent. They have now fired that agent because they couldn't get their home sold because they overpriced it immensely. Um, and uh, they've called us and we're going to go in and do the deal for them on their $850,000 golf course home. So good marketing because what I did was when they came in the property, I send all this stuff to them. Hey, if you want to take another look through the property, Here's the, the drone footage. Here's the professional photos. Here's our 3D tour, which we're going to get into here in just a second. And then I just pound them with stuff. Even though they weren't my client, they told me right up front they had an agent. By them giving me their information, they're agreeing for me to give them information on my home. I wasn't trying to sell our services, but when they saw what we did versus what their listing agent did, which was take regular pictures with the phone. She took the pictures. Uh, kind of tells you who's more in charge of the marketing aspect of things, right? So next thing we do is once we get the photos from the professional photographer, the 3D tour, the drones, all that stuff, uh, we use a company called boxbrownie.com. Do people use this company? If you don't, you should because it's super cheap. And it's awesome at what they can do. So if you saw on 
this image, you can see the grass is kind of dead or that time of the year, you know, they just don't look all that great. Well, here's all the things they can do. They can do image enhancement, which means green up the grass, take cars off the street, things like that. They can also do virtual staging, which we've used, utilized them for, which is in my presentation. So if I'm ever at a vacant home and or a home that has a couple empty rooms, maybe there's a divorce or something like that, I can tell them we can fill the room for them with virtual staging and we show them how to do that. Uh, data dust photos, and you can see how cheap this is. Image enhancements, 160 a piece. So if we go to jobs here, you can see- Dollar 60, so you said a dollar 60? 60 cents per picture, right? Oh, okay, yeah, that's cheap. <laughs> so here's water press. This is the home we just did. Uh, and you can see the difference. This is if we did the data dust, I didn't like how the data dust turned out because it made it a little darker. Um, so we didn't utilize those. But again, these cost four bucks a piece. And that's to put this fancy, you know, clouds behind it. And what we're doing is wanting to make this pop online. So when people are scrolling through searches on Zillow, Realtor.com, and Trulia, they actually stop on an image and click to see the rest of the images. It helps for retargeting, remarketing, things like that like that so here's the other one that we did utilize these pictures this is just the uh image enhancement one dollar and sixty cents per picture you can see if i'm marketing this property online are you going to stop on this home or are you going to stop on this home right so again it helps with the marketing aspect of things you can even see that they edited the clouds and stuff in the background made the sky a little brighter, clouds pop a little bit more. Everything's a little brighter and crisper. Same thing in the backyard. This looks like this could be a mud pit in the back corner. This looks awesome. Now, is this illegal to do? No, because we're not advertising anything that isn't already there or could be there. We're not putting a pool in the backyard. Now, in our MLS rules, when we use virtual staging or a digital edit to this sort, we have to say, digital edited or virtual staged or what have you in the description of the photo. That's all we have to do. You can see another one here in the backyard. Those look awesome compared to, even though we used a professional photographer, they can't change the time of the year, right? So Box Brownie is an awesome company to utilize to enhance the images that you have. And you can see we use what, five pictures here of just the exterior and they'll do interior, they'll do uh, headshots, they'll do all sorts of image enhancement for you. Um, so we did five pictures. I think it cost us a total of eight bucks to get all five of these done, right? $8 well spent, home sold in three days for 40,000 more in this price. Um, if you don't have the ability to hire a professional photographer, Box Brownie has this company called Snap, Snap, Snap. It's a, it's a stupid name, but it's a, an app that you can download on your phone. And you can actually take pictures of your homes. Okay. This is the original picture. This is after Box Brownie got it. So what you do is you take the pictures with your phone like you normally would do. You upload them directly through the app since they own it right into your Box Brownie account. They will do all the digital edits for you and put them and then send them out to you. So you can see you get some pretty good pictures without having professional photography. It's never gonna be as good as professional photography. I feel like on the inside, uh, a lot of times when this is kind of what's called HDR uh, photography. When you take HDR photography, it flattens out the image. You don't get any shadows or any emotion in the property and that's what you know, you kind of want to create when you're trying to sell a house. But if you can't go the professional photo route, definitely go this route because it's super, super simple and pretty cheap in all, all regards there. So any questions so far? Good. How much do you, uh, how much does your photographer charge, Aaron? So it depends on the size of the house. So a sure. house under 2,000 square feet is 149, um, 2,000, 3,000 square feet is 179, and I think 3,000 above 
is uh, 199 unless it gets into like luxury range. Okay. And then if we want them to do um, day to dust photos, you know, like at 7 p.m. or what have you, mm -hmm. uh, they'll charge another trip fee and some extra fees for that. They charge um, whatever the price is of the home is what they charge for the drone video as well. So like this one was like 2,400 and some square feet. So I think it was 179 and then the drone was 179 as well too. Right. And we do, they put, do they put together the video tour and all that stuff for you? Uh, yeah. So the drone footage and the video tour and all that stuff they create. Now, uh, I kind of use their video tour because I, I have all the rights to do whatever I want with it. So we will download it and I will do some like voiceover stuff in the house myself with my phone. And then I'll drop like drone footage and things like that in it and create a YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, which, you know, um, is part of the marketing program that we utilize too. So we, I don't like five minutes of just a house is like, oh my, and some background music is boring as I'll get out. So even if the house is cool. So I want to add a little bit more emotion, describe the house a little bit, you know, so we'll use some of their footage with our own. So the next thing that we utilize is uh, Matterport. Uh, Matterport's been around since 2011. I've been a Matterport uh, user owner since 2013. So one of the things that if I have a fault and also a gift, it's seeing things that I want and so I just go get it because <laughs> I think it'll enhance my business. So that was when I first saw Matterport. I was like, I got to have this. I think it'll be monumental to be able to sell myself and do things other people can't. Now, now 3D tours have made a huge impact, especially COVID kind of ramped them up big time. The coolest thing about Matterport, we own the equipment. So we do all our own Matterports. It's a lot cheaper than hiring them out. I know companies that do them, they charge, you know, 60 to 80 cents a square foot, which gets pretty expensive pretty fast. When we bought the equipment, I think it was like 10 grand, which is not cheap, believe me, but we've owned it for eight, nine years now, or however long it's been. And we've done hundreds of tours with it. And the equipment still works, it's still good. That's what produced this Matterport here uh, image. And why we do, why we utilize them at first, it was just to set ourselves apart. Then COVID came and it was like, people were hiring us to do their Matterports for them because there was only so many people that had Matterport in the area. So we were actually doing, using it as a, another revenue stream. Um, now we don't do that anymore because now more and more people have them. There's a lot of different, you don't have to use Matterport. There's a lot of people that do this, but I love Matterport. I've used it the longest. Um, if you've ever seen Matterport, this is kind of what it looks like, kind of their, signature right is you can walk through the home like you're in it i don't know how this is going to translate on zoom uh, because it slows everything down but you know i can walk through the house i can look up i can look down i can zoom in you know if there's a coffee mug on the counter i can zoom in and read it you know so i can go upstairs um so we go in in our listing presentations and show all of this and why this is so beneficial and how we've actually sold homes to people in other states that never even came to look at the home in person because they had this to walk through. If you have a VR headset, this is exactly how I explain it when I'm doing a listing presentation. If you have a VR headset, you can actually click this button right here and download a VR app, put it on your headset on, and you can be sitting at your kitchen table, turn your head to the right, and you're in that home turning your head to the right. Look up, you're going to look up. You put your eyes in the green dot, you're going to walk forward. So at your kitchen table in Los Angeles, you can view this home just like you're in it, right? That's a huge selling feature to potential uh, buyers. The other thing that potential buyers always want and they never get unless it's a new home build is a floor plan. So we actually have the floor plans right here for them, right? Uh, Matterport does have a feature where you can actually order uh, technically drawn uh, uh, floor plans right from them. I think they're 14 bucks. 
So this is the first floor. If I want to go second floor, I can see the second floor and it ghosts the first floor underneath. So I can see which room sits on top of which room. Completely handy that, especially with people that have kids, you don't want the game room above the master, right? Things like that. So um, again, huge benefit. I can go back, I can walk the home. Whoops, you go right into a wall, right? So um, I can walk the property. I can, you know, uh, measure each room. So we utilize these for our measurements. So we never have to go measure a home ever anymore because we do a Matterport on every single house. So I can go, hey, I want to know the size of this room. As you can see, we've already done it on this one. And you can see the measurements of all the rooms. This is what Matterport uses to take their technical uh, diagrams from. And then uh, if we go into the add-ons, no, downloads, sorry. They actually give videos. So we utilize these videos in our marketing as well. When we're creating Facebook posts, anything like that. If you guys have seen any of my stuff, you've probably seen this. You're like, how the heck does that? You do that, Matterport does it for me. So this is a nine second video. And we always go over this view because just sellers think it's really cool. <laughs> you know, the the uh, what they call the dollhouse. So you can see first floor and second floor, and I can spin all the way around the house. Uh, if you saw on the space itself, you know, um, this is the dollhouse. So I can actually, whoops, I gotta get both floors in. I can go like this and spin around the house and see everything. I think it's completely pointless, but sellers seem to love it. So we'll do what they want. Um, you can also do, um, exteriors with this. I still have a measure button on. So we do take pictures of the exterior of the property as well with the Matterport camera because you can walk in, walk out, all of that. So Matterport's really cool. As far as pricing, I don't know what they cost anymore. I know they're a lot cheaper than 10 grand, what I spent. I think they're somewhere in the three to 4,000 range now. Um, and Or you can just, if you're going to list 10, 20, 30 homes a year, it's better to take the hit and spend the money up front and piece them out. Then the next site we utilize is a site called R-E-L-A, so RELA. I don't know why it's RELA, real estate, I don't know. RELAHQ.com. The reason we use RELA is it gives us a single page website and they're cool and they're easy, easy to build. All right, so, uh, and they're cheap. So here's Rila's uh, homepage. If I uh, go in here to pricing, if you have one listing, it's 24 bucks a month. You can have up to five listings, it's 49 a month. If you have 25 active listings, it's 99. Now, because our market's so fast and has been since like 2020, I'm at like the $40, $49 a month because we, sell homes faster than we can list them a lot of times. And so we never really have more than five active listings at a time. If you do, they'll just pop you to the next plan. Pretty simple. And now what Rela is. Rela is basically a marketing hub for us. Um, I can basically, this is that watercress property. So basically what I do is I go in, I'm, I'll do a quick little run through Rela because it's pretty awesome. This automatically fills from the MLS. I can go and click all the things that are applicable to the house or I can just add them, you know? So green grass, now that's a tag, right? So this is what the internet picks up on. Custom status, just listed, it's actually sold. So, you know, we'd change that to sold, right? Pricing, all that. Then I'm gonna go through uh, showing schedule I never do, photo gallery. This is where I go and I upload all the photos of the house. Okay, pretty simple. Videos and 3D tours. They've got those too. So here's the video. I upload the video. The 3D tours, the Matterport. I upload the Matterport. And literally, when we get a listing and we put it in there, um, I can build or my assistant builds one of these sites in under 10 minutes. It never takes long enough. The longest time is maybe just to upload stuff. <laughs> you can add music to it if you want. You add your uh, documents and floor plans, like seller's disclosure, floor plan, you know, if you ordered that. 
address and map. It'll, it'll put it right on the map for you. If it's wrong, you can change it. This is the coolest part is the theme. Okay, so when I go to theme, this is my favorite theme is car, K-A-R-R. But I, this is the way it looks right now. So if I was to go to the site, this is how it looks. Okay, so when I scroll down on a desktop, the images pop in. Kind of cool. I can see all the photos right here. Here's the information about it. Here's the video. Here's the 3D tour. And here's our information. There's the map property. Right? Pretty simple. The reason I like it and the way I sell this to, to clients is we want to drive them to a single page website so they're not jumping from property to property to property. I do not want them to leave your house to see somebody else's house and then somebody else's house and then they can't find your house again. I want them to stay only on your property. That's why we create a single page website. So I can actually go in here and change the theme and let's say uh, I want it to look like this one. So I'll have to save it. Hopefully this works and I refresh it. Now it's a different thing. You can see it looks different. That's how fast you can utilize it. I mean, it's stupid, simple, stupid, easy. And there's even a, you know, fill out for leads. Uh, we don't get a ton of leads off of it. There is lead collection on there. Um, we do put in there that exit intent. So if they go to click out onto another property or into another window, a little box pops up. And it basically says, we'd love to show you more listings in your area. Fill out the form to see everything we have to offer or whatever you want to put in there. Everything's super editable, so I can change this and change the text. So it's super, super simple. Um, domains is, where do you want to, you know, do you want to purchase some custom domain? No. I usually never do. Sometimes I do. Um, but this is the domain that they assign me. So that's this website right here. Super simple. That's what I would advertise and market with. If I go into advanced, I could do some other cool stuff, like send it to different email addresses. You can see this goes to Zapier. The reason I send it to Zapier is if any leads come in, they automatically get put into my um, CRM. I can add Facebook pixel IDs, Google IDs, all sorts of stuff. And then I can do some more social stuff, right? So I can build out what my Facebook ad looks like Twitter, so on and so forth. If I use, if I pop up this up, it's going to open up a new tab and you guys won't be able to see it because it's not the tab I have on screen share. So, um, but basically it's a click of a button when you're on overview, you click this button right here and your Facebook comes up and it's got your post ready to go. You can just add words or you can just hit post and it posts it for you. That's how fast it is. Super simple. I love Reload because it's easy and provides good, you know, quality imagery. Do you know, Aaron, because um, I know you use, you know, if you go back to the first part we did with you, um, you talked about how you create that page in KV Core yeah. that you send to people. K I'm, I'm assuming, and for those of us at EXP with KV Core included, this probably does, KV Core probably has something like this. Do you know? Possible? I don't know. Not sure. Okay, this is something you've used for a long time, and it's I, cheap. I mean, so I could see where this, you know, I like how it looks and stuff. Yeah, I never, never use that. The reason I like this so much is it's just simple. And I can, like I said, create a listing in under 10 minutes, and it looks awesome. So. Yeah. And Sherry says here in the comments, you can create a landing page for a property with KV Core. I, I know you can. It's just, yeah, you know, I have permissions, Inc., and I can create a landing page there, but they don't look as good. I, I, I mean, that's just the honest truth. I can't put as much into it as far as video and the 3D tour and they, they just do not come out as good. Right. And I don't know how KV4 set up, but like my commissions Inc is if somebody goes to that to see the property and then they click anything, the devil's gonna pop up. Hey, give me your information and then a lot of people bounce. So this, I wanna try to give all the information first and again, like this is almost more of a selling tool for me and getting other listings more than it is for 
selling their house, unfortunately. But I think it does a good job of that too, presenting the property. Cool. Oh, you can also create brochures and stuff like that too. Um, so you can go down here and click brochures and it'll create brochures and flyers for the house as well too, postcards as well. So continuing on, so then we're, we would go into, um, once we've created all of this, we then go into our CRM. Like I said, I utilize Commissions Inc. I am in the process of converting over to KV Core, so I don't know how it works and <laughs> don't know how to use it. So I still kind of go back to my roots. And so I, I pre-searched this for you guys, just so you know, I, I used average price and I used uh, favorite city, somewhere in here, oh, there it is, favorite city. So what I did, I searched my entire database, average price between 500 and 750 because this home's priced at 625, right? So that gave me 782 leads that we have created since the beginning of this site. So what I do is I then check all of these people. I don't care how long ago it was. It could have been a million days ago. I don't care because people don't buy in the same timelines we think they should buy in, right? The average online home buyer takes almost two years before they buy a house. The seller, almost three. By the time they contact an agent, it's like uh, uh, 12 or 13 months for a seller and nine months for a buyer. So there's long lead times. Look at this person. They've been on my site 2,147 days. That's a long time. I can't even do math, but that's a long time, you know? But they were on my site two days ago. I would have never known that, you know, unless I had this information, right? So you can see average price, favorite city. I put Fort Worth, Keller, and South Lake because they're all pretty close to this property, right? That gives me 782 leads. I check them all. I'm going to send marketing of that property, of the real site we just went through to this group of people. I'm going to try to sell the home myself, right? Maybe I'm selfish. I want to earn twice the commission. But anyhow... Um, so that's how we start when we market every property and th market through our database. Then that gives us metrics in here where I can go and look and say, how many people have interacted with that property? So when we do our weekly calls, yes, we call our seller every single week. So every Tuesday is my seller call day. I tell sellers that right up front. Every Tuesday, you're going to hear from me. If you've had zero showings, or if you've had 100 showings, you're gonna hear from me every Tuesday. Now, you may not wanna hear my voice, so you can just hit decline, and I'll leave you a voicemail message with what I would talk to you over the phone. It literally is that fast. Half of them take the call, half of them don't. If I call them, I'm gonna say, hey, it's Aaron, You know, this is my voicemail message. I just wanna go over your weekly marketing report. We had 87 people view your home on our personal site, 22 on YouTube, uh, 1100, which is garbage because Zillow puffs their numbers on Zillow, you know, 42 saves on Zillow or whatever it is because you can get all those metrics off those sites. I basically give them all the stats. Now, we utilize a showing service called showingtime.com here. I know they're in a lot of markets. Um, so anytime someone shows a home and then leaves feedback, they're going to get that automatically. So we don't talk about feedback and stuff unless they want to talk about a personal feedback that was left. We talk about marketing. Why? Because they hired me to market their home. So let's talk about what we're producing on the marketing that we're doing, right? So we don't talk about showings and feedback. Typically, if someone leaves feedback that isn't, we're going to send an offer. They're not interested in your home. Now, you can take some of that stuff like, oh, that has Pepto-Bismol pink wall, you need to paint that. And if I couldn't get them to paint that after repeated attempts to try before we went on the market, that's going to help me to get them to paint that. Awesome. Right? The other thing we do on a daily basis is we, uh, when we first take the listing and it first goes live, we're going to do a neighborhood search of their house. So if their house in this case is in the preserve of Hidden Lakes, we're going to create a search for the preserve of Hidden Lakes, just like they were a buyer. So anytime a new listing comes on the market, they get pinged. Anytime one goes under contract, they get pinged. Anytime one sells, they get pinged. Why am I doing this? 
and showing them there's activity happening in their market and what the prices are doing every single day automatically. I don't have to think about it. So then if they ask, hey, why isn't the home selling? You know, we've seen four others go under contract. Oh, well, those were all priced at 550. You're at 625. That might be the reason. It eases that conversation of talking about price because they're seeing the market, what the market is doing every single day. It's coming right to their email. Um, videos, we already talked about that. We do coming soon ones. We do on the market. It just depends on what they are. Uh, coming soon is a little harder nowadays with all that clear cooperation stuff. So uh, sometimes we do it, sometimes we don't. Uh, as far as signage goes, we do use a six foot tall T posted sign. So our six foot tall T posted sign has our, um, my picture and my wife's picture because she's better looking than me. Um, so we put that on there. People remember a face more than they remember a name. So that does help for branding, especially when you're doing a lot of video and marketing in the area. We're seen everywhere. Like I was at my son's baseball game on Tuesday and I had like three people stop me. Hey, well, I see you all over the internet on your videos, you know, and I'm kind of embarrassed because I don't think they're all that good, but they're working. If people are noticing, you know, they're working. Um, and then uh, on that sign, we use two different riders. We're going to use our guaranteed sale program rider, which is buy this home, we'll buy yours for cash. It's right there on the sign, every house, doesn't matter. Uh, and then we'll use a text writer, text this number to get the 3D tour and all the pictures of this home. They hit the text, I've got their cell phone number. That's all I need to start marketing to them, right? And then the third sign, or actually the third sign is actually the second sign, it's a separate sign, I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of it. Basically says open house every day, call for times, and it's our office number. It's the exact same number that is on the real estate sign. Or, sorry, it's one digit off. Real estate sign is uh, 305610. The everyday open house is 5611. The only reason it's different is when someone calls the 5611 number, I know it's a buyer sitting up in front of the house wondering when the open house is. The reason we utilize that is if somebody, and we explained this in our presentation, if somebody was in front of your home and wanted to see it today at 3 o'clock, would you show it? And most sellers are like, yeah, they want to see it at five. Would you show it? Yeah. What about 10 in the morning? Yeah. Okay. So your home basically is open every day as long as there's an appointment to show it, correct? Yes. So your home is an everyday open house. Why don't we market that? That's it. And we get three times as many calls on that little bitty corrugated plastic piece of crap sign than we do on our big branded 3D sign. Probably the best thing we've ever done as far as signage goes. I mean, we do get some texts, uh, just people want to see the photos and stuff, and we have a number. But when they call that sign, they're ready to roll by. Now, we have had some occurrences, and I had born sellers up front. Every once in a while, people can't read, so they'll come up to the door, and they'll knock at the door, <laughs> read the door, what have you. Um, but you just tell them, hey, the open house isn't at this time. Please call my agent for times. That's it. So their home is open, open house every day. Because I'm putting it in the buyer's vernacular, right? Buyers love open houses. Why? Because there's no pressure. I can go in with a group of people and maybe the agent won't even see that I'm in there, right? So that's why they love open houses. That's why they hate calling real estate agents because there is pressure, there is sales. Well, I'm gonna make them call me to get in for that low pressure thing, which is a one-on-one -on -one appointment for a showing and I'm going to lock them down as a buyer because I'm going to show them what I do for them on the buyer side. One thing just real quick to hit here, because again, I think we're running into this more and more in this market because you still have sellers that are looking at things from six months ago and whatever they want to overprice their home. We're going to see you know more and more price reductions. I think one of the things about this, number one, I mean, with two signs, like some people might think like two sign riders, three sign riders, plus another sign, like that's just too much. But again, the whole idea of this, and this is how, you know, again, you know, what, what, what do we call it? Marketing listings for maximum results. Don't just use the listing to sell that house and to, and to get, uh, you know, I see so 95% of the signs out there, are the homes for sale. Here's the one for sale sign, period. Realtor phone number. That's it. 100%. I never see two signs in there. No, 
You put out an extra sign. You put out sign writers with with domain names, that kind of stuff. The whole idea of this is you're going to pick up more business. You're going to pick up more buyers. You're going to pick up more sellers. The phone's going to ring. You're going to get so many more results from that one property. You know, it's not just about getting that home sold. Yes, get that home sold. But it's about maximizing that to bring in that much more business. And that's that's what this does. I mean, is that, am I right there, Aaron? And, you know, when we're talking, so I always, and see have probably have said that a few times, it's a six foot tall T-posted sign. You know, like. It stands out. It stands out versus those little ones you slam in the ground, you know, um, that you cannot see, especially if you use dark colors. You know, ours is white. It's got a big picture of my mug on it and it's reflective. So if you're driving at night, it's like shining back at you. Like it. Yeah, I pay like an extra five or 10 bucks for the reflective thing on there. But, you know, again, all I want to do is stand out. I want brand recognition. That's it. One of the things I want to mention here, guys, and Aaron, if you have any other thoughts on this, and you might do it a different way. One of the things that is just our general rule of thumb, which we haven't had to use a lot in the last couple of years, but we're seeing it more now is, again, and I started to mention this, reducing a price, you know, for the seller. And so I think when you do this kind of marketing and you make that call once a week, Here's, here's all the sites you were on this week. Here's how many people viewed your home. Here's whatever. General rule of thumb that I've always used over the years was, you know, and it, you know, every 30 days or every 10 showings, we should at least have an offer. If we've gone, let's, let's say we've had a lot of, you know, seven days we had 10 showings or five days we had 10 showings, but no offers, we're really close. We're not close enough. We're just not good enough yet. We're probably one and a half to three percent off on the price. You do a one and a half to three percent reduction in the price, and you're going to get the offer. If we've gone thirty days and we haven't had an offer, you know, we're, we're we need to reduce the price. Now we've had good showings, but just no offers. Thirty days, we need to reduce it. Okay, and I tell them all this up front when I'm meeting with them, so it's not a surprise when I when I give them this call, like, hey, we need to do it. Sometimes I've even done this. Let's start here. You know, if we, I might even put it in the additional provisions in the contract, so I don't even have to call them. You know, we've already signed off on this, so you can do that. But then the other thing too is like when you have this kind of marketing in place, and you're doing all these things. You know, the one thing that we'll tell them is like, look, it's not about people not knowing about your home, because here's all the things I've been telling you. You're on this many sites, you've had this many views, you have all this kind of stuff. People know about your house; they're just not interested in your home at this price. That's just the truth of it. I never get the objection or the, the comment, what are you doing to market me? Ever. Never, ever. Because I have, I talk to them every single week about it. And we'll send them examples if they want to see it. You know, um, we'll send them the numbers. We're not lying, you know. So um, we haven't had to do that as much lately. But like when the market was tougher, obviously we would build a package that we'd send to them weekly that would show them all the marketing and how many stats. So. We just do it without spending the extra time to put that together because we don't have to right now. Um, but yeah, we use a price on target sheet. So it just is like, it looks like a bullseye and it shows them, you know, um, if you're not getting any showings, you're probably this far off. If you're getting showings but no offers this far and it works its way in to and how many percentage they're off. Um, and then we have that conversation and it's not, we don't really talk much about reducing the price. We talk about making a market adjustment. Okay. So it's just better language. And then it's like price improvement. That's what we Yeah. So uh, we'll use a market adjustment and then we'll say, you know, Mr. So we'll use Watercrest again, 625. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, six, your home's at 625 right now. Unfortunately, we're not getting the activity that we need to in order to sell. We look on the price on target sheet. I'd say we're about 3% off of where we need to be, you know, and that's only what 18, 20,000. I know it's not only, but that's what the market is telling us. You know, the property is probably worth, um, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't tell you exactly what you can sell for, but let me ask you a question. If someone walked up to your front door with a duffel bag full of $600,000 and hundred dollar bills, would you take it? And then you, be quiet. And they say yes or no. Yeah, I would take that. If someone had a duffel bag full of hundred dollar bills with 600,000, I would take it for my house. Awesome. Why don't we tell the rest of the market that? And that's what we reduced the price to. It's good. And I think, you know, we'll get into this next week, I'm sure. But going into that appointment, 
you know, when, you know, we used to tell things all the time, like, look, I can't determine the price of your house. You know, it's not up to me. You can't determine the price of your house. The market is going to determine the price of your house. It's all about supply and demand. You know, that's why the home prices late, the last couple of years have been so crazy. There's been just such a lack of supply. The more demand I can create on your house, you know, the, the, the higher the price we're going to get for it. And then you show them all this stuff that you're going to do, you know, whatever. It's just, it's, it's all these different things that you can do to where they've interviewed five, four of their agents and you come in the door, they're going to hire you. And we'll get into that next week. You know, we've got that pre-listing package, that whole thing that Aaron did in part one which was phenomenal. If you haven't watched it, go watch it. So good. Okay. Last week, different tools to get listings, marketing ideas, more great stuff, HomeBot, Google My Business, all this stuff that he's doing. Again, all this stuff is very cheap. Okay. The only thing today, Matterport is expensive, but again, but there's, there's ways to do that. If you're doing a lot of listings, look into it. You know, if you're getting a few a year, there's, there's different companies out there that do similar things or you could hire it out different ways to do it. Some of the photographers will do some of this kind of stuff. But that, you know, that R-E-L-A, Rella, whatever like that, that was awesome. That's the first I've heard of that. So just some good tools here that really don't cost next to nothing. And signs, you know, you get them one time and you're going to use them for the next however many years. And to do that and make that listing pop down that street, you know, you're going to pick up that much more business. Now, next week, we'll get into your listing presentation, which is going to kind of put all this stuff together. I think the the signs cost about fifty bucks a piece, I guess. Yeah. Um, but again, you can reuse them, you use them listing after listing after listing. So, uh, like I said, we order ten at a time. Not that we have ten listings at a time; it's just they give a price break at that point. And um, you know, when signs get bad or just mangled up, that's kind of a reputation piece. So you don't want a nasty, janky sign in front of the house. You know, that's your business you're promoting. So. Anyway, uh, guys, let's wrap it up. We're running a little long, but uh, great stuff. Thank you, Aaron, again.